How to create a multi-sample tonal instrument for direct wave? Let's dive in. Hi. Old Sage Wisdom asks in Loop Talk, can you make a video on making sample libraries in direct wave? I'm unable to find a single tutorial on this topic. I am struggling with creating my own sample libraries with a faster workflow. For example, creating a sample library of a melodica using direct wave instead of contact. First, let us have a look what kind of data direct wave requires to work best. Let's create a direct wave instrument. I decided on this range and every third key sampled. The other settings shall not concern us for the moment. Just the last one. As we want to have single samples on our disk and not a self-containing file, we have to disable monolithic file. As you can see, Direct Wave mapped all the samples properly and in the folder we got our four files. In the file name we got the name I chose, underscore and the key, underscore and the velocity. Let's open the C4 sample in Edison and look at the sample properties. The only part which matters to us is the sample section. The sample was automatically saved with a root key of C4 and a key range from C0, which is the default value, to D4, which is set by default to G10. And this is exactly how the sample was mapped in direct wave. D sharp 4 on the other side sits now in between. Let's have a look at the sample properties. The values are exactly how Direct Wave mapped it. Let's see what happens if this data wouldn't be present and we would only rely on the information in the file name. We take a bunch of samples and drop them into Direct Wave. The samples do not have any information saved in the file, but the root key is included in their name. Hmm. Everything sits on top of each other. But wait, there's automap zones. But it didn't change anything. If DirectWave shall use information out of the file name, one has to follow certain rules. Before the key, there has to be an underscore. So we include underscores in the file names and try again. Better. But there's still some chaos. We forgot to tell Direct Wave which octave the samples are in. Perfect. This worked without even going into the sample properties and changing for each sample all the data. Let's go a step further and make our first own recording, like you would do for external or acoustic instruments. There are many different ways. Here is the one I find works best, but of course feel free to try different methods. I don't have any external instruments, so we just record a hammer here, on the same keys we did before. After recording, the biggest challenge is now to trim the samples properly and save them with the proper name and proper settings. I recorded on purpose directly into Edison as it is perfect for the work ahead of us. Delete the marker. If you want to normalize the sample, it's up to you. I do. Hit this button for auto slicing. Go to the wrench icon, run script, regions, Convert markers. This now turned the slice markers into regions, which have the advantage having not only a start point, but an end point too. Make sure the slide points option is turned off. Otherwise, you cannot move the end point without moving the next start point as well. Mm -hmm. 
zoom in into the first start point and set it properly. Grab the endpoint of the first region and set it to your liking. Repeat these steps with all regions. These start and end points now define the start and length of each single sample we want to extract. We have already seen how important the proper naming is. Go into the region menu and choose Rename All. Enter the pitches these regions were recorded in. This step includes now the key into our sample name with the correct syntax when exporting. It's always a good idea to go again into the Regions menu and to choose Assign Trigger Nodes to All. This command puts now the root key of our samples into the sample properties. This wouldn't be necessary for Direct Wave in this case, but there are many other situations where this can help. For me, 16 bit are enough for exporting. As long as there is no further processing, 24 bits or 32 bits are just wasted space and might not be compatible with older programs or plugins. Click on the disk icon and choose here Export Regions for sampler use. Create a new folder and hit Save. There are my saved samples. Let's drag one into Edison. The sample has now the start and length we told it before, and beside having the root key in the name, it's set to in the sample properties. Didn't we spoke before of having an underscore in the file name? Space dash space is possible too. You can use either. Let's try if it works. Please make sure that you've got the option Extract root key from file name is enabled as long as you don't get into any trouble. Click on the folder icon and choose Create program from samples or drag them in from your file browser. Hmm. Again, everything on top of each other, but now Automap Zones works. If you want always Direct Wave to put the samples in correctly without Automap Zones, you have to open each sample again in Edison after exporting the regions and resave them after setting the key range properly. Loading the samples now. Maps everything fine without any further interaction. But note that always if you drag in a single sample into Direct Wave, the first zone gets spread over the whole range. Not before the second zone is involved. The set property, respectively the entries in the file names, are taken into account. Let's go one step further and do velocity splits. By letting do the sample robot its work, everything works fine and the resulting files have now different velocity values in their file name. 64 for the lower layer and 127 for the higher one. Let's do this manually. I did the same recording like I did with the Hammer before. But this time I recorded each note twice with different velocities. All the steps in Edison stay the same like before. The only difference is now that we expand the naming of the regions by underscore and the velocity value. There seem to be a bug in Direct Wave that it doesn't import the velocity range from the file name. The files made by Create Direct Wave instrument work fine, but no matter what I try, when creating samples with different velocities, it doesn't recognize the correct velocity value, no matter how I name it, no matter how I save the file. 
Nevertheless, there is a quite easy workaround, which shouldn't be a big problem until this bug is fixed or ImageLine told me what I did wrong. For the moment, just put the samples in different folders. One folder for all samples of one velocity range. The next velocity range in a second folder. And so on. Now drop the samples of one folder into DirectWave. Shift plus left drag to select all samples. Control plus left drag on the little handle to put them all to the desired velocity value. Drop now the samples of the next velocity layer into the sampler, but put your mouse onto a place where they don't overlap and shift drag for selecting only the new samples. Control left drag the handle vertically to the desired value. Done. Thank you for watching.